Super Mario Brothers is a nearly 40 year old game. Is there anything in it that hasn't been done yet? The answer is yes. There's actually a lot of unexplored territory in this game, and one of those unexplored avenues is scoring one-ups. That's the goal of today's video, score some one-ups that no one has ever claimed before. Along the way, I'll detail some advanced techniques and setups you can use to get one-ups that shouldn't otherwise be possible. I'll top it all off with a grand finale, so stick around for that. Let's get into it and pull off some brand new achievements in this classic game. There are a few different ways to score one-ups in this game, and we'll be exploring each one. Let's start off with the classic one everyone knows, the one-up trick on the stairs in 3-1. Uh, I mean, the one-up trick everyone knows on the stairs in 3-1. This is one of the most famous tricks in video games, and has been possible repeatedly throughout the series. While this staircase in 3-1 is the most well-known place to do the trick, there are several others, like on this little staircase in 4-2 for example, or maybe the end of 6-2. The most hardcore spot for it though is definitely right here in 8-2. I've always wanted to get this combo going with Mario above a pit. And in this spot, you can actually get two infinite 1-up tricks going on simultaneously. Lakitu is dropping spinies, which can start racking up the shell kick counter. Usually the other places in the game with Lakitu don't have any other enemies, probably precisely for this reason, but right here in 8-2, there's this little window to exploit Lakitu's infinite army of spinies and score infinite one-ups from them. This was really satisfying to pull off in a completely glitchless fashion. You can set something like this up in 4-1 or 6-2, but it requires this bizarre looking glitch where you can turn spinies into Koopas. It's easy to score a ton of one-ups from there. There's also this spot in 7-2 of the Lost Levels, where if you scroll the screen just far enough to load the Koopa in, you can bounce the shell between two walls, and that's another way to get the infinite spiny combo going. Shoutouts to Andrew G for showing me this one. But yeah, back to 8-2. I never thought you could abuse Lakitu for 1-ups completely glitchless in the original game, until I recently realized you can make it happen right here in 8-2. At this point, we'll take a brief intermission to talk about the sponsor of this video, Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon is a cereal brand with the goal of reinventing your childhood favorite cereals in a form with more protein and less sugar. Each serving of Magic Spoon cereal has 13 to 14 grams of protein, 4 to 5 net grams of carbs, and 0 grams of sugar. Their variety pack comes with four different flavors. They've got cocoa, peanut butter, frosted, and fruity. The peanut butter one is definitely the best in my opinion. I grew up eating cereal for breakfast almost every morning. These days whenever I get it, I like to look for cereals with protein in them, and Magic Spoon is nice in that regard. If you're interested in trying Magic Spoon, you can click the link in the description and try it today. Be sure to use code COSMIC at checkout for $5 off any order, and Magic Spoon is very confident in their product, they offer a 100% happiness guarantee, so if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund you with no questions asked. So, go to magicspoon.com slash cosmic or scan this QR code on screen and use code COSMIC to save $5 at checkout. Next up on the list of 1-up tactics is killing strings of enemies with a shell kick. I think it's pretty well known nowadays in Mario games that if you kill 8 enemies in a row with a stomp or a shell kick or even a star, that you'll start getting 1-ups. This was actually pretty challenging to do in the original game though. Not only are there just a few spots in the game to do it, but even with a straight line of 8 enemies, it can be hard. This game only allows 5 enemies on screen at a time, so unless you're very deliberate about how you spawn them, some of the enemies probably won't show up. Most of the time you have to let the shell get near the edge or even go off the screen, and then clean up some enemies on the rebound. Some can get more complicated than that, like here in 8-1 where you have to stop the shell in the middle of the combo to get all the enemies to load. Even more complicated than that is this one in 3-1, where you have to get all the enemies onto the ground before re-kicking it. I'm not sure we've made it quite complicated enough yet though, so let's keep going. The hidden 1-up mushroom in 1-1 is very famous, but there's a much more hidden 1-up in this level. Many years ago, Andrew G figured out a method to get 8 enemies to the right of this Koopa, where there are normally only 6. If you run into an enemy and take damage, you can get the enemy to change directions. We'll use this as part of the setup. Also, we need to bump into some walls and get Mario farther to the right side of the screen. That way we can get to the right side of this Goomba before he falls down, and get him walking to the right. After that, we need another mushroom so we can turn another Goomba around. From there, we let the Goombas walk off screen, and because the Koopa hasn't loaded yet, they successfully make it to the other side. Now we've got 8 enemies lined up, and we can score a 1-up that very few players have achieved. This trick is really useful, in a pointless speedrun category I made up 10 years ago. The goal is to get 10 lives. You start with 3, so you just need to figure out how to get 7 1-ups as fast as possible. 
In early 2017, Andrew G and I were battling it out over this very prestigious record. I got a really good run using this 1-up trick in 1-1, and that's when Andrew G fired back with a new advancement in frivolous 1-up chasing. If you stomp a Koopa or Buzzy Beetle mid-air, it'll go in its shell and fall to the ground, unless the position you stomped it at is lower than the ground. Then the game thinks it was at ground level when you stomped it, so it just sits there in its shell, floating. From here it'll ignore walls and just carry on with life. With frame perfect precision, you can keep the shell just high enough that it can still interact with enemies that are properly on the ground. Using this we can break into new territory, where we can chain more enemies together in one shell kick, even if walls are between them. This trick Andrew G showed in 1-2 gets two 1-ups from a single shell kick, something not normally possible. But the goal of today's video is to go even further beyond, so let's take another look at 1-1. I noticed that the shell kick strategy wastes three Goombas in the process of setting up the combo. There are 11 enemies here, so in theory there's potential for a 3-up kick. It's going to be hard to figure out how to get them all in one combo though. I think it's time to break out the big guns and play Quest 2. After you beat the game, Peach presents you with a new quest. You can restart the game, this time on a sort of hard mode. Quest 2 has several differences, but the main one we want to focus on is that Goombas become Buzzy Beetles. That means they're ripe for the kickin'. I got Mario very far to the right side of the screen by clipping through pipes. This was so I could stomp both of these buzzy beetles as soon as they spawned. After juggling them around for a bit so they both wake up at a good time, I got one of them stuck below ground, and at this point I had 10 enemies to the right of it. Send that buzzy beetle shell sailing, and we score 3 1-ups. A satisfying and brand new way to play the most iconic level in gaming. Alright, on to another method of garnering 1-ups in Mario, and that's stomping enemies. It wasn't until Super Mario Bros. 3 that you could hold the jump button to bounce higher off of enemies. Combine the tiny bounces you get in the first game with the fact that there can only be 5 enemies on the screen, and it is straight up impossible to stomp 8 separate enemies in the original game. There is of course the classic shell stomping trick that we talked about earlier, but that feels like its own separate thing. This video from Happy Lee will show us a step in the right direction. We just went over a complicated process of how to get 3 1-ups in 1-1 with a shell kick, now check out what Happily can make happen in this level. That's right, he got 6 1-ups from this combo. Plus the 1-up mushroom earlier in the level, that's 7 lives total. Talk about a 10 lives speedrun. Anyway, this is a very impressive sequence and requires extreme precision and knowledge of the way Mario's vertical acceleration works, among other things. It still doesn't feel quite like what we're looking for with the stomp combos though. It's still along the same lines as the shell bounce trick. Let's keep looking. Alright, it turns out that the way to satisfy our desire for a stomp combo is to use even fewer enemies. For some reason, landing on these vertically moving platforms in this game doesn't reset your stomp chain. This video is yet again Happy Lee's handiwork, where he demonstrates this at the end of 1-2 in the most entertaining way possible. Can we take advantage of this trick anywhere else in the game? Yes, in fact. We can easily take advantage of this in 4-3, with this Koopa right next to these moving platforms. Just gotta land back on the platform after each stomp, and we're building up the counter. Oh yeah, and you can ride these platforms even after they turn invisible at the edge of the screen. So that's fun. Anyway, just gonna keep building our combo up. Huh? Did you see that? The counter was at 4,000, and then I kicked the shell and got a 1-up. That seems like it skipped a couple steps. It turns out that the points you get for stomping enemies, kicking shells, and killing enemies with shells are all handled differently. When killing enemies with a shell, an offset is used to start the combo at 500 points. When stomping enemies, it starts at 100, but has special cases to award higher fixed values based on what type of enemy you stomped. When kicking a shell, the points you get awarded is a little weird. It uses whatever value is in the stomp counter, and then adds 3 levels to that. This may have been done to give you more points for kicking a Koopa shell immediately after stomping it, but it works as part of bigger combos too. And in our case, we've built up to 4,000, so it adds 3 to that, and we're at 1-up! This also means that to score a 1-up from a stomp in this game, you have to get a stomp combo of 11. There you have it folks, it wasn't always 8. As if it wasn't already hard enough to get stomp combos in this game. I think this is more just a product of how they set the scoring system up, rather than them deliberately handpicking this number. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed learning some more intricacies of how scoring works in this game. Alright, we'll cap off the video with my favorite combo I pulled off while making this video. I realized that right here in 3-2, there are a lot of enemies in a row. 
I wasn't sure exactly how many I could kill while keeping the shell on screen, let alone how many would actually spawn in, but I went to work. You'll notice I used a lot of the tactics we've gone over throughout this video. From here, I'm just gonna sit back and let you watch my magnum opus unfold. If you made it this far, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe as it really helps me, and I'll be putting out a lot of similar videos this year. And if you want to support me, a link to my Patreon is in the description.